What's up guys? Thanks so much for tuning in today's video. Kara from K's Ways here where I like to inspire you to do it your way. It's been a minute y'all. I know. I, I ain't even got no words. Like work has been working me. Life has been crazy. Okay. But we are back to it. We're back to the makeup. Y'all know the Sephora sale is coming up soon. I had so many goodies that I have been testing out lady. But actually this video was me testing out stuff that I had never tried out before. Well some it's like a mixture of things. But the main stars of this show here is the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Palette. Definitely wanted to... Oh, another one came out! Yo, I'm gonna stop lifting this damn palette up because every time I do that, another shadow comes out. Now it's the shade Delilah. The first time it was the shade Mia. But I don't know what's going on. These shadows are too soft and too damn expensive to be falling out on the floor, okay? So I'm just gonna put that to the side, but you will see that in action. That's what I have on my eyes today. And in addition to the new Hourglass Snake, this is their Lighting Edit Unlock Palette and in the Snake, in the Snake Packaging and the Snake Palette. Definitely wanted to try that out for you guys. I actually have two different sides of it. <laughs> I have two different blushes on my skin at the moment, but you can't really tell because this palette is given like very kind of pinky kind of vibes as opposed to last year's palette I showed you guys last year that this palette had more of like those orangey vibes. So if you wanna see all these products in action, definitely continue watching. I wanna take it slow, just wanna let you know. Ready to spend some time, I wanna spend some time. Needed some time to grow, just wanna let you know. Ready to spend some time, I wanna spend some time. We're gonna start off with the eyes. I sped through this part because I didn't do any talking. So it's just a nice, quick, simple look. I was testing out the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette. So on the screen, you'll see the brushes that I used along with the shade that I used. Honestly, y'all, I love Natasha Denona palettes, but this one, I don't think this is the one for me. Like a lot of the colors, basically look the same as they layer. I mean, I do like the way they layer. It's nice and smooth. Everything went fine with using them. But I'm looking at the palette more and more and I'm like, there's like no depth in the palette. It's, well, then you really only have one and a half, <laughs> not even two, one and a half good shades that you can use for depth. And I'm not feeling that. And also, two of my eyeshadows then fell out at two separate times. When I first got it, the shade mid, down at the bottom fell out and then during this video oh y'all saw it already in the intro Delilah went and fell out so I don't know how I'm feeling about this palette guys y'all let me know your thoughts down below but this one just might be being returned and like I said I love Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes I just I always reach for the what's the one the glam face palette and then also the what was that last one she came out with that was bomb I think yeah no the my dream palette man and the way I wore that bronze palette, like, I love her palettes, but this one just ain't it for me. I did line my lower lash line a little bit, but I don't know what liner I used and I don't know where I put it after I used it. So sorry about that, but I did use like a reddish 
liner on my lower lash line. Now I'm gonna apply my primer. This is the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer with Niacinamide. I want that to absorb in, and then I'm gonna apply false lashes from Kiss. These are the avant-garde from the Lash Couture Masterpiece Collection that they have. These lashes are really lightweight, but I did have to cut a good chunk off, and I'm just showing you the amount that I did cut off before I applied it onto my lashes. Of course, I'm taking my trusty Kiss Lash Liner Glue. Absolutely love this. It's so easy to apply, and the lashes actually stick, so I ain't mad at this at all. One of my favorites. But let's get into this face. I'm gonna go in with the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. It's a brightening and hydrate increase proof serum concealer. Mm, it's okay. I haven't felt, I haven't fallen like in love with the product, but I have been using it and testing it out for some time now. If you remember, in the summertime, I picked this up from Ulta and I had to take it back for a different color. So now the shade that I have now is NF14 and it's definitely a better match than the other one was. But even with me changing the color, it didn't make me like the concealer anymore. It's definitely not a drying concealer, so I do like that about it. As far as the claims of it being crease proof, my under eyes have little lines underneath. So to me, anything is going to settle in that. What I look for in a concealer is to see if it looks cakey in between the lines so for this it does blend out nice and smoothly and it actually does last a good amount of time during the day i'm just gonna let that concealer sit while i go in with my stick cream bronzer this is from lys and this is like the smoothest most creamy cream bronzer it does get a little messy because of how creamy it is but i don't mind i really do like that cream bronzer and i'm taking a real Te techniques brush this is the 450 this is their soft sculpting brush i'm just gonna go ahead and blend out that cream bronzer now i'm gonna take one of my favorite brushes to blush blend out concealer that is the number 56 this is the pro flawless airbrush brush from sephora of course it has the silver ferrule so they no longer sell these brushes with the silver ferrule now all of their brushes actually have just the black ferrules like this so i'm not sure if they have this if this crossed over into like their new pro collection but it is one of my favorite brushes so i'm gonna use that to just blend out my concealer and of course just blending around the edge oh i meant to go in with okay i forgot to use my I wanted to use the stick foundation from Fenty since I haven't used that on camera as of yet. When I do an underpainting type technique such as what I just did on my face, I like to go in with a liquid foundation. I was going to use the Fenty Ease Drop Blur Smooth Tint Stick. I forgot that I haven't used this on camera as of yet. I have tried it and it was the summertime when I tried it. Like when this first came out, it came out in the summertime and I tried it then and I felt like it kind of sat on the skin. I need to test this out a little bit more so I can't like necessarily suggest it. I'm gonna take one of my favorite liquid foundations. This is the Makeup Forever HD Skin. Mine is in 4N62. I'm just gonna put two pumps here on the back of my hand. I don't wanna use too much. And I'm gonna take like a fluffier brush because I did the underpainting technique. So I don't wanna like take away from what I already put in. I already put on my face so I'm just gonna go ahead and spread that out on the back of my hand and just like tap over everything lightly so that it blends in together I love this foundation now HD skin is right like for me this just like makes everything look like I don't know flawless and I don't know it just looks like your makeup is done like professionally or something I love this HD skin foundation more than the original and i can't say the same for the powder i'm still using my matte velvet skin powder and i'm almost done guys i'm so sad but for the sake of this video i am gonna new use the newer one this is the hd skin matte velvet powder i'm gonna use that to set the foundation that i just put on let me just continue to blend this out and i'm just gonna put that leftover foundation down here I shouldn't have even did the cream contour because I want to go into the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. Haven't used that as of yet. I picked mine up from Ulta actually with some points, okay? Because these palettes are $90 this, this year, guys. Like, I understand 
inflation and all that stuff. I understand, but jeez, ninety dollars for a palette. The only reason I got it is because I had some ultra points. You better <laughs> better believe that, okay? I have been loving this Dominique Cosmetics powder. I actually have two shades. I have the pink and I have the translucent medium deep. So not pink, it's called Rosita. So that's the rosy kind of pinky shade. And then I mix it with the medium deep because it's just a tinge too deep for me. But mixing the two, oh my gosh, so smooth under there. But today I want to use the one size. This is the Sweet Honey. I picked up a full size of the Sweet Honey from Pat. I was about to say Patrick Ta from One Size Beauty. So y'all see how I do have fine lines underneath my eyes. And I find like all concealer does eventually settle there. But before I put the powder, I like to tap out. See? It's very smooth, that concealer. So me tapping out and then I'm going to go ahead and put the powder to set underneath my eyes. And again, this is the One Size Sweet Honey. And you see how that just disappears into the skin. So I do like this sweet honey powder as well. It's just a little more mattifying than I normally go for. But it does help smooth and blur underneath that area. This is the eye that's set underneath with the one size powder. And this is the eye that's not. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Go ahead and blend. So just going back in with that one size powder now that that's done we're gonna take the makeup forever hd skin matte velvet powder i have mine in the shade 4n67 compared to the old shade which was y505 still my favorite but i'm gonna use this one for the sake of today's video just to set so i'm not gonna take too much of the powder i just want to go around and tap and make sure everything is set besides the areas that i just set with the one size powder i need to do a little something something to underneath these eyes gonna zoom you back in i'm gonna take the shot the shade wit here and i'm gonna run that underneath my i'm gonna run that underneath my lower lash line and then i'm gonna go out the up uh, i'm gonna take the shade silhouette the darker shade there that i used on the outer corner and i'm gonna just connect the outer portion of my under lash line so let's I've been testing out the Clarins Water Lip Stains. This one that I'm using today is in the shade 04 Violet Water. Shout out to Clarins for sending these over. They actually sent me all four of the shades. The first one that I used was really light and didn't really stain for too long, but I think this shade lasted a little bit longer, so I'm not mad at it. And I went ahead and paired that with Max Lip Liner in Cyber World. And I like to top these off actually with the Clarins lip oils. And no, this is not sponsored, but I love them lip, lip oils. I've been telling you all year about them Clarins lip oils and I'm still rocking them. All right, it took a minute, but I am back. I no longer have my freaking screen because my laptop done died over here. So listen, I'm on lunch. I got to do this real quick. But I wanted to come back and get into this Hourglass Ambient Palette. So this is the holiday palette from this year. This is the Snake Palette. And this is the first time I'm going to be putting it on my face. So, of course, I want to come and show you guys. So, this is what the palette looks like. Similar to the color of last year's palette. Last year's palette was just a little bit deeper in blue. But this is this year's palette, the Snake Palette. I got mine from Ulta. Of course, on the Hourglass website, you can customize your outer packaging with uh, the selection. You can't choose each individual shade, but they have certain palettes that you can put inside the outer packaging of your choice. In this palette, we have a finishing powder, which is Radiant Light. We have a blush in the shade Coral Haze. We have a metallic strobe powder in Infinite Strobe Light. Then we have a blush in Sunbeam. We have a blush in Mystic Flush. And then we have a bronzer in Solar Bronze. I'm going to go into that bronzer first. I'm not sure if it's going to show up as a bronzer to me. But I'm taking my Sephora. This is my number 
50 actually I want a, a denser brush cuz I'm not sure how this is gonna carry over to my cheek oh, I should do I'll do one side with a dense brush I'll do one side with a dense brush and then I'll do the other side with that fluffy brush so scratch that I'm taking the number 53 going into that bronzer shade and you see I picked it up there and I'm just gonna see how much of a bronze this is really giving me I see it I definitely see it so this is more of like an a orange tone bronzer but it definitely did add warmth to that section that I'm adding it to but this can also kind of pass as a blush shade as well not so much the bronze that I be going for and this is the third time I've laid that up and it's just looking more and more like a blush in my opinion so not necessarily the tone of bronzer that I would normally go for. I'm gonna take that fluffier brush on this side and see how I like it with the fluffier brush. I definitely needed the density from that other blush. From that other brush. I'm always, yo, whenever it comes to brush and blush, I always interchange the, the damn words. And I had to rush go and go back to work when I was in here doing my makeup earlier. Oh my God. Oh shoot. Why you didn't tell me the inner portion of my eyes was looking like that? I'm not used to wearing makeup around the house. I'm working from home today, guys. And I don't know if I rubbed my eye. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's looking a little cray cray. I don't know what happened now. But anyway, we're talking about the face palette now. <laughs> Next, I want to go into that highlighting shade. So this is the number three, the metallic strobe light. And I've never tried any of, uh, I, oh, I can definitely see the glitter particles falling as I tap my brush off. I'm gonna, oh, okay. I know y'all see that. This metallic strobe. Oh, that is very golden, number one. And it's like a, a pale gold, like a real yellow gold. Not necessarily my favorite kind of highlighting shade, but you can see the highlighter on this side compared to nothing on this side. You can definitely see the difference. I'm going to take a Real Techniques brush. This is not the same brush that I had used to set underneath my concealer. This is, I don't want to say new because I did use it, but I cleaned it off on a microfiber towel. I'm going to take the finishing powder here and I'm going to go up underneath my eyes here just to kind of blur that. But I'm familiar with that shade. I think out of this palette, this may be the only repeat shade, Radiant Light. If I'm not mistaken, that may be the only shade that is a repeat in this palette. But I don't think I have Radiant Light, so it works out for me. I didn't really... Honestly, after I did my makeup earlier, I did not even um, spray my face or anything. So I'm feeling a little... Not that I'm feeling dry, but I just feel like everything hasn't come together as of yet. I literally have three blush options in here. So this one is the Coral Haze Blush. And then I have these two blushes down here. I have Sunbeam and I have Mystic Flush. Mystic Flush. Mystic Flush is looking a little glittery for my liking. So I'm actually going to go into these two. Taking the number 96, which is the Sephora Pro Blush. Blush brush. I'm going to take uh, Coral Haze. And I tap a little bit on the brush there. This is what Coral Haze looks like on the skin. subtle I actually like that I really like that I 
It doesn't seem to be so buildable though. I just feel like it's very soft where, you know, hourglass powders are so finely milled and soft. It's like, but yeah, it did build up a little bit, but I don't find like the intensity. Like if you look at there, look at the color there, you would think that would be a little bit more potent, but it's actually just right. So I'm not mad at it. I'm going to go on the other side now with the blush at the bottom, which is in the shade Mystic Flush. Oh, okay. This one may be a little bit more potent than the other. Let's see. So that's what that one looks like on this side. Um, this one is a little bit lighter and looks a little bit more pinkier. Like, they said this one was coral. To me, this is a little bit more coral leaning. Where this side is a little bit more berry leaning. What do you guys think? Let me know what y'all think about it. Because to me, this one is more on the coral side. And that one was more on the berry side. Now, this one looks a little bit like... Uh, like this side has a little bit more radiance to it where this one is a more matte kind of blush So with that being said, I'm gonna take another blush brush I'm gonna take like um, a wispier kind of blush brush and I am gonna go into that last blush shade that uh, What is it sunbeam and sunbeam? Oh Listen, you don't want to play with uh, Hourglass and they their beams and their highlights and stuff as you can tell but I'm just gonna Whisk this, push this, push this towards the back here. Actually, did it do much? Oh yeah, I can see the radiance on this side now that I tapped it over this brush. Well, this one was already had a little bit of radiance, but this one was more of a flat matte. And now that I tapped Sunbeam on top, I do feel like that brought a little bit more radiance to the cheek. Similar to the orangey blush that we had in last year's palette like that one was potent and you can see the difference i feel like me tapping sunbeam on top of this actually gave me that similar vibe so actually i like this okay so i see why they put in that metallic -y kind of shade because it's not like so much of a potent color it's not like so much pigment behind there but i think it's more or less some of that sheen on top of it so it's like a nice blush topper so with me using all six shades in this palette here I like it like I like it am I like head over heels as much as I was with last year's palette I like that they gave me two different tones so this is last year's palette um did I show you the inside this is the last year's palette and this one leans a little bit more orangey so you see we had that orange blush here and then this one also gave us like those gave us the radiance where the palette from this year is giving me berry is giving me more rosy where last year's palette gave me a little bit more orangey so they are different enough where I can justify having both of the palettes I just had to go ahead and spray me spray myself down with some um mac fix plus because i hadn't done that all day i've been sitting here working i want to go ahead and take the hourglass veil translucent setting powder i have mine in translucent z let me tell you i love this powder when it was just regular translucent i actually wore it to the beyonce concert my face was beat all day so i really wanted to get my hands on this medium deep powder so i'm just going to take a little bit of this as a finishing powder i want to go ahead and rub that I want to buff that all over my face just to finish everything off here. That's just a step that I normally do in my makeup routine. And to me, it just helps bring everything together. Looks more finished. Well, it's a finishing powder, so it's supposed to complete the look. And I love their finishing powder. So while the, finish, while the finishing powder in here was more of a lighter shade that I used up underneath my eyes, to go all over this uh veil translucent powder everything guys it's everything love this powder so i'm so happy that i went ahead and got me a full size of that Use but the 
Natasha Denona. I need a nude palette. As far as this palette, um, everybody's raising their prices now. It just call it the name of inflation. But this shade here, Mia, came out and I had to press it back in when I did my swatches. Actually, check out my swatches on TikTok. I've been showing like um, holes and things like that over on TikTok because it's so much easier for me to create that kind of content. But I definitely wanted to come on YouTube, my first love. Come sit down with you guys and share these products with you there as well. But definitely, um, I'll leave all my information down below so you guys can definitely follow along with me over on TikTok because, you know, things are posted a little bit more rapidly over there. But I definitely miss you guys. K-Squad, as always, thanks so much for taking the time out of your day. Come chill with me. Watch me playing some new makeup that I haven't showed you guys as of yet. If you're new and you love beauty and lifestyle videos, I would hope that you consider subscribing to the k Base channel. We would love to have you. And I hope to catch each and every one of you in the next video. Until next time, y'all. Stay blessed. Later, guys.